Hi, welcome to Cool Camera Corner. In this brand new series I take a look at old cameras that I happen to find interesting and cool. Some of them are genuine classics and have rightfully earned their place in history. Others were just ordinary cameras that people once used every day without thinking anything of, but in all cases they can still be used today to take fantastic photographs. So without further ado, let's have a look at today's camera. Okay, I'm here with Ollie, who is a fantastic uh, camera collector and hoarder of all sorts of interesting things. And today he's going to show us a couple of really interesting cameras, one of which is the uh, camera, I guess, that you've all been waiting for through uh, seeing the, uh, the blurb about this on social media, which is the M6. Uh, but also another camera which is very, very close to Ollie's heart. Absolutely. And it's a great one for people that are getting into uh, the rangefinder scene and don't necessarily want to spend like a money first time out. Yeah. And that's no, the Zorky. Uh, so we'll start, I think, probably with that camera because yeah. it's the camera I think that got you into rangefinders in the first place. Well, absolutely. I mean, um, here it is. It's a, it's a, it's a Zorky One. It's 1955, and it's got its um, it's got its little sort of it's a it's a 1535. It, it, it came with it initially, um, but it's just a great fun little camera to shoot. Um, you know, it's not too complex. It's um, it, it's it takes a bit of getting used to. I mean, you've got your uh, your two viewfinders there. You've got your viewfinder rangefinder. So that um, means it's not a, a coupled rangefinder like the Leica. This is you have one for composing and then another for focusing. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, so that took a bit of getting used to, but I mean the thing is, you can pick these up for next to nothing, and it's just a great fun little camera to shoot. It really is. Um, you know, it's it's small. It's I tell you, it's built like a tank. If somebody tries to burgle you, you can use it as a weapon to take photos of the evidence. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> there was that wonderful scene of somebody trying to uh, rob um, Henri Cartier-Bresson in Paris, wasn't there? Did, did you hear about that? No. Uh, back in the 50s, somebody came up to him, some drunken on the on the streets of Paris, yeah. uh, and he got his camera and swung it around his head and, and knocked the bloke out with it. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if you want a weapon and you're yeah. you know you know a rangefinder will do it, right? I mean, yeah. these old oh, yeah. cameras were built absolutely like tanks. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I. Mate, this thing's hewn out of granite. I mean, <laughs> well, look, have a look. It weighs an absolute ton. I mean, that's a heavy thing, but, like because it's quite a small camera, um, yeah. and and the, the, the solidity of that. This is is this a brass top? What what's it um, actually made of in there? I believe it is brass. Um, I haven't seen any brass in, but no, um, right. no. Uh, but it's I mean, still, it, all the coating's very good, isn't it? I mean, yeah. there's, nothing, there's no brass coming through in any way. No, absolutely. And and I tell you what, Soviet cameras they're so derided for for being agricultural, but actually it's a, it's a superb little body. It's, it's yeah. Really it's, um, it does what it says on the tin. Absolutely. And in fact, the, uh, the, the, the Russians and the Soviets, uh, when they started to take the cameras, like the Kievs, for example, which were basically yeah. contactors in the early days, uh, mm. but they took all that early technology and they were making some very, very precision things. And I think a lot of the, the bad press that they get over here was mainly PR put out by oh, yeah. the contacts boys and Absolutely. people who were actually probably a little afraid of cameras like this, well, which took such damn good pictures. Afraid, and I think they were probably slightly hacked off as well, because what the Russians did was they effectively picked up a factory and moved it to the Ukraine. They just yeah. stole all of Zeiss. The whole lot. I mean, they literally yeah. took everything, didn't yeah. they? I mean, no, they, they shipped out all the parts and, and the lot. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. whole lot. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is actually a copy of a Leica 2. Um, it's, um, and it, it's not quite as smooth, it's not quite as refined, but to all intents and purposes, it shoots in exactly the same way. Absolutely. And the Leica 2 these days, I mean, just a body only is going to cost you several hundred quid. And uh, yeah, you can two, pick one of these up yeah. for, yeah, you know, less than a hundred, yeah. you know, so um, uh, yeah. probably a bit more with the lens on. Find one of these guys for 40 quid. That's amazing, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, to get into to rangefinders, you know, I, I think that you really can't do much better, frankly. No, absolutely, uh, absolutely brilliant things. Uh, yeah, those are good, and for a similar money, you can get you can get the Kievs, the Kiev fours, yeah. and things which were the yeah. contacts. Um, and it's just a really nice way of getting in because, but the glass in these. I mean, tell us a little bit about the uh, the, the glass that you've got in that one and, and the well, type of pictures that it takes. So, I mean, this is um, it's actually a copy of a Zeiss Tessa. Um, it, it's um, it's beautifully sharp. It renders really nicely. Um, I, it's. The, on this particular lens, it's not terribly contrasty. The, the coatings weren't all that on, um, on Soviet glass. Um, but for black and white, the mi micro contrast in this is absolutely superb. But yeah, so they, they made some absolutely incredible lenses back in the day. And, yeah. and uh, I think absolutely. what a lot of um, people don't realise is that this old glass that you get that's coming out of the Soviet Union, really from the, the sort of 30s, 40s, and right the way through until the 1970s, was actually yeah. a lot sharper than some of the modern stuff that you buy now. If oh, you yeah. go and buy your absolutely. kit, 80, 18 to 55, with your or, you know, Canon Rebel or your D3100 or whatever, you're not going to get anywhere near the type of image quality that you get out no, of these. Abs of absolutely glass. not. Um, I mean, I've, I've got into collecting these guys as well. Um, I've got a 5015 um, and it is awesome. It's fantastic. Really, really good. It's, it's, it's 
a special lens, mm. I suppose. It's, mm. it's, it's quite sort of dreamy, mm. um, but sharp where it needs to be. Lovely. It's, mm. yeah, mm. no, I mean, some of, the, some of the glass you get for these is amazing. Perfect, so that's a really good tip for anybody looking out for lenses, pick up some of this stuff. So this was the one that got you into to rangefinders, yeah. but uh, I think the, the, the bug really hit, didn't it? Uh, tell us about yeah. what you uh, have come here with, uh, with today, because there's a, a camera that's uh, just sitting down here, which yes. I think is quite um, nice to have a look at. Well, this, um, this, I picked this up, um, and as you say, I got bitten by the bug, um, and they're just so much fun to shoot. So I bit the bullet, and uh, I got this little bad boy. Oh, look at that. It's my so, talk us through this. This is an 85 Leica M6. It is amazing. Um, it's quiet, it's, um, it's subtle, um, but it's got some of the best lenses for 35mm on the market. Mm. Uh, bar none. Bar none, yeah. Um, I mean, they yeah. are, they're in a league of their own. Yeah, really. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, the, the it's, it's um, the viewfinder as well. It's absolutely amazing. You, mm. you, um, so, for those of you that don't know about, um, about how rangefinders work, um, and Leicas in particular, um, you've got this, this fairly sort of wide angle view, um, and it superimposes frame lines. Um, so, you can actually sort of look around the image and you can, you can sort of see what's what's going on around the image before it actually happens. what's coming into frame yeah. and what's coming out of frame. Whereas with an SLR, you've got what you're taking your photo of, maybe slightly less. And yeah, that's, that's it, because a lot of uh, DSLRs, in fact, don't even have 100% coverage. So you're looking no. at just slightly inside the frame lines and yeah. you can't tell what's happening. And the other thing is, at the moment where the picture comes down, the, the mirror gets in the way and you don't actually yeah. see what you're taking, really. Absolutely. Uh, so and that's, I think, another, it's, it's, a, it's the romantic notion of the, uh, of the rangefinders that you get to see the picture that you're taking. Yeah. I, the thing is, it's just that much sort of easier. It's, it's more intuitive with this. Um, you know, again, you can sort of see what's going to happen before it actually happens. You don't need to be sort of looking around to sort of see what's what's going on. You can yeah. see everything you without see it to... And the viewfinders in there are so bright. I mean, you can. It's yeah. just a. It's like looking through a big bay window. I mean, it's just yeah. an extraordinary, absolutely bright viewfinder in there. Absolutely. Um, but I mean, the other thing is, um, it just gets out of your way and lets you do your job. Mm. Um, it's an entirely dumb camera, mm. um, and a lot of people say, well, it's it's camera bling. Um, because that it doesn't do anything for you. It's mm. manual focus, uh, shutter speed, aperture. That's all set manually. Mm. Um, but there's a certain there's a certain beauty to that because yeah. um, you know you've got entire control over what you're doing, yeah. um, and you get exactly the shot that you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, this was hot stuff in '84. I think mm. they released these '85. Something like that. Yep, be. mid '80s, wasn't it? Um, mm. But yeah, um, this had two LEDs. Right. And. The Leica guys were going nuts because that was. <laughs> <laughs> this is much too futuristic. I mean, you know. You've got you've got stuff like the uh, the OM4s coming out, um, yeah. and that's got you know it's multi spot metering and, and oh yeah yeah you've got all of these uh, Nikon that was F4 then. Uh, what were we in 84, 85? When did the F3 stop? It was, it was um, around about the F4s yeah, like, come in about yeah, that time. And, and that, I mean, it had everything on it. It was motor drives and it was, yeah, they, they already had like, I don't know, 39 autofocus points or yeah. something by the F4. And, and yeah, <laughs> it's kind and of, yet, you know. And yet the Leica fanboys are going insane because this has two LEDs. Because it's two LEDs. And a little battery it? spot. There. Right. <laughs> um, and and that was, that was uh, that's what it was. But I can I can see where they're coming from. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's very much the purest camera. Mm. I suppose is, is the best way to put it. And the M6, the LEDs. I guess that's because this was the first camera that had the, the light meter in it, right? Yeah. Because before that, you didn't uh, even get the light meter. Is that right? Uh, well, I mean, there was the uh, there was the M5, which mm. had this bizarre sort of thing that came down on the stalk behind the lens, right? And then okay. popped up. But um, this was the first sort of practical one, right? Um, and if you if you wanted on, there's there's just that little white spot, and that's that's all it is. Um, uh, is that a selenium there. meter? What what is that? Um, I do you know? I have no idea. Mm. Absolutely no idea, but it tells me when it's too bright and too dark. Fantastic, and that's really all you need. <laughs> it does that. Yeah, absolutely. As you re and it's a really interesting point that you said, and it's absolutely bang on, which is that he, the camera gets out of the way. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, I guess they look at Leicas as being these expensive things, and so therefore it must be this, it must be the be all and end all. The, the, the Leica is what you're focusing on. I've got a Leica, look at me with my Leica, <laughs> taking pictures with my Leica. Yeah, camera but actually, blink. Yeah, exactly, that's it. But the reality is actually very different, isn't it? It's, yeah. You, it allows you to just focus through that lovely bright viewfinder yeah. on the picture. No, absolutely, um, and it's 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 brilliant fun to shoot with as a result because I'm not busy standing there going, oh well, I've got to do this and that. And that. <laughs> it's it. yeah, um, that's that's all there is to it. That's it. Really is.
Now, we're going to do a little bit of an interesting experiment. I don't know if this has been done on YouTube before, um, yeah. but it's, apparently there's a rumour going around. Some of you may know that Olympus bought out the OM1 uh, and got in trouble by Leica, because they originally called it the M1, yeah. And uh, Yashahisha Mari uh, Maitani. Uh, Maitani, yeah. that's a chap. Um, he, uh, he basically got, a, as far as we can work out, he, he got a, he got a, a, a Leica and some tracing paper and put a mirror in it. <laughs> that's, <Yeah. laughs> that's basically what he did. Absolutely. Yeah. And Leica went a bit mental about this. Um, but the rumour is that you can get an OM1 case and, uh, and, and put a Leica in it because they were so identical in size that they yeah. actually used the same case size. So yeah. let's have a look. We actually so, have here. Uh, a like uh, or three, an OM1 case from the OM1, and uh, we shall see if this actually fits in. So this is yeah. a this is a first. Let's see what well, this I'm, I'm interested in this. Right, and okay. see if it's actually so true. It looks as though it's about the right size. It's not far off, is it? Yeah, no, not at all. Look, there you go. You see? Um, Let's give this a go. It could right. be a world premiere. Um, oh, it's a bit of a squeeze. It's Good. tight. Oh. But it's, but it's, in, it's taking a face <laughs> off his nose, uh, and of that spe uh, spectacular moustache, oh, which uh, um, we're a big fan of. I'll tell you what, technical hint. <laughs> we got the strap on there. Yep. Which <laughs> but I think it might go in. Actually. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, this this this, this <laughs> proved the Leica boys right, actually, that, that you had basically drawn round it mm. with a bit of uh, a bit of grease proof paper and a pencil. Yeah. Uh, because the, the the shape of it, I mean, we're, we're looking at this going in now, and there's um, I think without that strap on, that's that's going to absolutely that's, fit in. Uh, that will fit in perfect. Actually, look, you see, it's, it's ah, got it's, it's got a little, little a little thing yeah. there, so you can actually put the thing around so you can it. Put the, ooh, I might have to do it with my arm. Okay. Ooh. There we go. And look, and even in. the strap lugs. And the, and the strap lugs actually spot. marry up as well. Yeah. Look, so there, there we, we go. go. I mean, that that proves <laughs> the point. And and I mean, the the OM1, um, which came out uh, in what 1978, 1979, something yeah. like that. Um, I mean, it, it you know, well, it's, on, let's, in, let's in terms of out. dimension, let's let's take it out of there. And see what the dimension is, because it was yeah. the it was the smallest sort of film SLR that was that was around, and, and by yeah. quite a long way. Um, let's just try the, the sort of length of it along, yeah. along the back there, Look, there um, and you can see it is uh, you know it's a it's very very uh, close match. That's there. very similar, isn't, isn't that just? Yeah. yeah. So uh, Olympus got in trouble; they had to change it from the M1 to the OM1. Yeah. They didn't change anything else. No, so, that's yeah, that's it. Yeah. That was it. Um, so point about that is that the Leicas are very very small cameras and that makes them a joy I think to, yeah. to use because you know for those of us that carry around big modern DSLRs to work uh, and a bag of lenses it's just yeah. such a joy to it's, take yeah cameras. absolutely I mean it, it's not it's not a great camera for everything mm. um, it's not you're not going to take this to a football you're not going to no. take it to but you might you might take it to say a wedding or just yeah. going out going out shooting on the street mm, because it's absolutely quiet it's subtle mm. it's not noticeable mm. you're not going to be sort of you know you you bring out some honking great nick on d4 yeah and and people are going to be terrified of it, it you yeah know, it, it looks, looks like, like a like cannon the, yeah, not, not a cannon cannon a cannon gun <coughs> that, you know it looks like you're going to mow people down <coughs> with these big cameras and these well do you know what to be fair um half of them do look like you can mow people down <laughs> <laughs> yeah you actually can you can do a yeah. nasty injury for some of these yeah. things like big, absolutely you know? So we're now going to have a look at some of the pictures that Ollie's taken with these cameras. And yeah. the, um, the first picture that's up on screen now, um, this was taken with the, and this is the, the black and white one with the, the, the man with the, the dog. The gentleman with the, yeah, with the dog yes. in his back. So um, talk us through, through that and uh, the experience of shooting that and what lens you, you use to fit, take that picture. Well, this was actually with the, um, oh, by the way, um, so <laughs> this, is, this, this. Is my, uh, this is my little, because my cap didn't come with the, uh, my hood didn't come with the cap. So I've got a little bubble hat that came off a drink bottle. Fantastic. Um, but this is actually a Zeiss Planer F2, uh, 50 F2. Right. Um, and another stunning little lens. Mm. It's about as sharp as you will ever get. Mm. Um, it was a toss up between this and a, and a Sumicron. Right. They're about mm. the same money. Um, and it's just got this superb sort of 3D pop that a lot of people talk about. And you can really see that in the image that's up on screen now, yeah. just that uh, it's, it's in black and white as well, so it's, it's, yeah. it's a nice way that you can actually see just how well defined those edges are, yeah. how 3D everything looks in, yeah. that, in that black no, and white, the, the contrast on it and its ability to render just lovely smooth shapes around things. I mean, it's yeah. an extraordinary thing. And that, I guess, it's a, it's a combination of the way that, um, that, that Zeiss actually you know, put their elements together, but the coating on them was, was very, yeah. very good and just allowed for very little glare to get through, didn't it? I mean, yeah. It allowed really the sort of depth of the picture to come forward. But the other thing is, um, the, the plane is actually a fairly old design. Mm. Um, it's um, it's a it's a fairly old formula. They, they you know they, they had it in Rolleiflexes mm. and, and this sort of thing. Um, 
And I think it's a classic case of if it ain't broke, don't fix, don't fix it. it. Yeah, yeah, it works. It takes yeah. our pictures. You know, yeah. why, why do you want to mess around with that? You know, well, precisely. Um, and it's it's a really it, it's a lovely feeling lens as well. I mean, you know, the, the focus is really smooth on it. Mm. The, the the aperture, it's simple things, but. It's See, just, this, this is the thing that makes it look at that I mean you can't get any sense of that on YouTube at all but the, it, it is so buttery smooth to change that aperture ring on there yeah. it, it's just it's a delight and it makes and there we go there we've got focus on there it's so smooth in both directions yeah. and there's no there's no click when it gets from from one direction it, it changes direction so smoothly yeah it's just absolutely, absolutely buttery and I think that's the thing that makes these things so pleasurable to, to shoot with the quality of the way they're engineered is so yeah good. I mean, no it's absolutely good. lovely absolutely lovely stuff yeah um, and this next picture which is the that lovely strawberry cake yes uh, yeah. which is taken was that it, the same? it looks a little bit like a smiley face doesn't it yes it does <laughs> <laughs> it's a very happy strawberry yeah, cake yeah and it's happy because it was cake. taken with that lovely taken lens, with sure. the finest camera that ever there was exactly um <laughs> I'm sure somebody's going to have something to say about that. You'd be nice in the comments. Yes, exactly. We'll uh, get the trolls on this. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Again, um, it's just it's thanks to to this guy. I mean, it was that, it, for God's sake, it was shot on Kodak Gold. Wow. Um, uh, it, which gives you some some kind of a, a clue of the, the the rendering of this. Yeah, exactly. Because um, I mean, that's a it's a very sort of basic film stock, and it, yeah. it's been it's a no. It, means renowned for its ability to render colour very no. well but the lens has actually gone through that and uh, um, just they, they really pop I mean that you could eat yeah. those you know strawberries off yeah, the top yeah. of the cake no they, absolutely they and again you can you can really sort of see and, and the other thing is the bouquet it just, mm. the background just melts away it's yeah, just, it really ceases to exist yeah I mean, it's so, so you've got, smooth you've you know, got really the cake is. and mm. that's it and that and yeah exactly and that again it just helps really relieve things in the background and draw faces to them and, yeah and it's just so creamy that bouquet isn't it yeah. it's just it's, it's so soft almost as creamy as the cake almost as creamy as the cake <laughs> <laughs> there we go there we go <laughs> so um the the third picture that we've got um what, what, what picture do we have on on um this is actually a picture of my mother um, it, ah, it was cool. taken on taken on holiday in in, in Thailand, fantastic. Um, mm. And that was using this guy. Um, it's a, a Voigtlander uh, 35 1.4. Um, mm. And just uh, as a side note, another reason I love mm. these. It's tiny. It is tiny, isn't Look, it? Look, I mean, that's all that pokes off the. Off I mean, that's just that's that's the 3514. Yeah, this yeah. is this is the 3518 that, that, that Nikon do. I mean, <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, hang on. And Look, and, and, and this is the smallest lens. I think this is the smallest current lens in in Nikon's lineup. Is is that really? Yeah. Wow. Well, Apart from they might have a pancake lens or two yeah, well, floating possibly, around, but but, uh, but but for for, for the, I mean, and it's just silly, isn't it? I mean. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Thank you. And also, this is all plastic. And that's yeah, all made out is, of metal stuff. Metal. And it, yeah, exactly, again, it weighs yeah. a ton. It's it's a heavy little lens. It is a heavy. What it is. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it weighs. I would say two or three times what that does. I mean, yeah. you know. Well, hang on. Look, pop it on the body. Have a look at it. Um, and that again makes. I mean, strip something it. very very un unobtrusive. And the thirty-five yeah. uh, mil width. I mean, that's the one that you know your Robert Cappers and your uh, Bruce Gildens and your Cartier Bressons. Yeah. I mean, these, this is the thirty-five mil with the Leica. That's your, that's your classic. I mean, it's strawberries and cream of Wimbledon, that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, listen, Ollie, thank you very much for joining me Not and showing me these cameras. Um, we will be uh, looking in the next episode that we're doing with Ollie because he is a, an absolute camera nut like myself. And yeah. He's got a lot of really, really cool stuff. And the next episode that features Ollie, we're going to be having a look at TLRs. For those of you that don't know, that's a twin lens reflex. Um, so we're going to be uh, delving into the uh, yeah. wonderful world of TLRs because you can still use those today. And again, this is yeah. a, an, an undervalued section of, of cameras because they don't make them anymore no. that you can get such stonking pictures out of these things that yeah you know. no absolutely um but we'll leave that for another video we'll eh? leave that for another video great stuff Marvelous. ollie thanks very much for joining Not me at all. No, thank you that's brilliant now if you haven't done so already there's an enormous great big red box there that says subscribe jab at that frantically and furiously and uh, sign up and look at all the other videos there's plenty on there and i'll see you again soon thanks for watching if you like that video click on these videos you may well like them too cheers